Hindu seers were among the earliest and the greatest artists of the world. They would often convey their observations and thoughts in the conceived language of symbols and icons. The richness and variety of symbolism used in Hindu scriptures is unrivaled. Few examples may be recalled to capture the beauty and significance of the symbols in Hindu pantheon. The portrait of Lord Shiva has deep symbolic significance. The matted hair proclaims the length and intensity of his austerities or tapas and the cobra around his neck signifies that even the most poisonous snake becomes harmless because the one who has identified with Supreme has gone beyond all the effects of matter on his senses and organs. The third eye in the middle of the forehead represents the concentration of knowledge or jnana and it embodies the absolute power to destroy the sloth, tamas and all its manifestations. That ashes that besmear the body recall to us that this body of which we are proud and obsessed is ultimately bound to end up merely as ashes. With Lord Shiva, the dancing pose, Nataraja, symbolic of the cosmic dance. The Lord dances over the body of the demon, Apasmara, who represents the ego, Nandi. The snow white bull facing the Shiva temple represents the human soul, the Jeev Atman, who is separated from the divine due to animal tendencies but is attracted to God by divine grace. The elephant head of Lord Ganesha signifies the highest intelligence, Buddhi. It represents the largest brain matter. The trunk of Lord Ganesha signifies the discretionary power. He can pick up a needle from a heap of grass. The large ears of Lord Ganesha signify the importance of hearing to accept what is good and reject what is not useful to us. The small eyes of Lord Ganesha symbolize concentration and the power to focus our attention on what we should while shutting out the rest. The Vedas of Lord Ganesha signify the importance of knowledge in our lives. The famous mythological legend of the churning of the ocean by gods, devas and demons, asuras, is a symbolic of churning the mind. Attainment of the nectar of immortality stands for the sense of wisdom. The epic scripture, the Mahabharata, is studied with many symbolic presentations. The blindness of Dhritarashtra in the Mahabharata is the blindness of our mind, which cannot see right from the wrong. So too is the war of the Mahabharata considered as war of within our own self. There is a constant war in our minds as to whether we should go by the right path of God or the wrong path of mammon. The five Pandavas represent virtues that are few. The hundred Kurvas represent vices that are many in number. Draupadi expressed our honor when she was being undressed in the court of Duryodhana. Draupadi later asked the Lord why he did not help her earlier. The Lord replied that as long as she was looking for help from others, he would not come. But as soon as the devotee wholeheartedly looks toward God and asks only his help, the Lord comes instantly. In the Hindu pantheon, the Supreme Lord always resides within one's own self 
as a supreme wisdom. One must constantly strive to connect and unite with this eternal wisdom of the Divine to conquer worldly problems. When Arjuna and Drajna went to the Lord before the commencement of the war, the Lord declared, on one side would be I, without any material possessions and the army, on the other side would be all my wealth and army, but not I. Arjuna, the man of virtue, preferred God, his counsel and moral support, while Drajana, the man of vice, preferred the wealth and army. Krishna is portrayed as a universal husband. The husband in the traditional Indian society is a symbol of provider, caretaker and defender. The maids or gopis represent all human beings who look at this super model of a husband. He has all the qualities that a dependent, weak and vulnerable wife would seek in her husband. They even turn their back on their conventional husbands and seek his company. Human beings weary from the conventional and material possessions, finally turn to God for the eternal support. Lord Krishna's fruit is a symbol of the soothing and comforting voice of God. We may listen to God's divine music from within and become peaceful. We may also emulate the Lord and bring peace and joy to others by our soothing and harmonious words. In southern India, Deepavali marks the victory of Lord Krishna over the mighty Asura, the demon Naraksura. It is after this victory that the Lord married the 16,008 wives. In this story, the 16,008 damsels represent our numerous desires. When we work selflessly, however, dedicating our actions to a higher goal, the desires remain in check and most important get sublimated through the blessings of the Divine. Hindus have a special regard for the lotus flower Padma. In its 1000 petals have been associated with the mental conversions, the chakras finally culminating into sa sa sara, the highest stage of spiritual evolution. The lotus, which represents from mud roots, which arises from mud roots and blooms in beauty, is a symbolic reminder of the emancipation of the mind from the low to the high. The swastika is a four-angled figure formed from the shape of a cross with the arms bent to the right, signifying auspiciousness and peace. There is evidence to suggest in presence uh, in the ancient its presence in the ancient Sindhu Saraswati culture and was later adopted as symbol by the Brahman caste in Aryan rituals. Swastika is a Sanskrit word where Su means good or auspicious. It is believed that this ancient Indian symbol with slight modifications was misused as an anti-Semitic sign during the Nazi period. The saffron color of the flags on the top of Hindu temples, saint and the ropes worn by Hindu seers represent the sun's life-giving glow and purity. <laughs>